Hello and welcome to the Medical Ancillary Sales Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Berg, and joined as always by Vivian Hudson. Vivian, how are you doing today? I'm great, thanks, Mike. And I'm excited we have another special guest today, and I'm sure you're excited to introduce her. So would you like to do the honors? Oh, I'd be it'd be my pleasure. And um, as you guys know, we try to bring value. We try to bring you guys opportunities for you to make legitimate money in the ancillary world. And one of the, the things that I get in terms of feedback from people who've worked in this space is more so than, than the actual service that we're selling, just being able to work with a reputable vendor that has timely, accurate reporting and accounting, and just knowing that they're going to take good care of your customers, that, that's 90% of the battle right there. I know that's some of the challenges I always face as a rep out there, is just dealing with a company that I knew had my back. And we've been dealing with Lisa and Orthosport for going on two years now, and they've been wonderful. So, Lisa, I wanted to thank you for getting on today's podcast. Hi, Mike. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, it's a pleasure to work with Ancillary Medical Solutions, and I'm looking forward to moving this program ahead with you. Tell, tell us about your program. So... What we have is Orthosport in our partnership with DME Advanta have designed a, a durable medical equipment revenue program that allows practices to generate a large revenue stream by utilizing durable medical equipment can, that they can conveniently give to their patients in the comforts of their office. That's exactly what this is. The, the solution will allow the practice the ability to get paid by durable medical equipment. Um, it works really well with Medicare, PPOs, workers' comp, personal injuries. Um, as you're aware, I'm sure you're hearing a lot in the field, a lot of doctors are involved in what is called, considered a, a stock and bill consignment program. Are you familiar with that, Mike? Yes, but go ahead and explain it. So in those types of formats, Basically, there's a manufacturer of a product that puts the product on a shelf in that doctor's office. And every time the doctor braces that patient, that manufacturer's stock and bill company handles all of the billing and the monies go to that stock and bill company. They sometimes provide uh, a stipend to the doctors for the rental of that supply space. How our program differs is we feel that it is your patients, therefore it should be your money. So in the convenience of your office, you're going to brace your own patients. We're going to handle all the heavy lifting. We're going to bill under the doctor's MPI money, uh, under the doctor's MPI numbers, and all of the revenues go directly to that practice. So it is a fantastic way for doctors to provide the best in patient care and generate an amazing revenue stream, all while enhancing uh, patients' compliance. Uh, surgical interventions and lowering overall healthcare costs. So they, they won't have to have a DME coordinator on site anymore, is what you're saying. They do not, exactly. And a doctor supersedes a DME fitter, an orthosis, uh, an orthotics fitter. So just by virtue of their practice, the personnel in their practice will be able to take these products, which are right out of, right out of a box right off a shelf and fit them on their patients so lisa what type of practices would you suggest that uh reps out in the field target for this type of solution so you've already mentioned a bit about uh the the workman's compensation personal injury but you know where where would they be best found so Ideally, if you could focus on those business-minded doctors, doctors that are really wanting to capture an ancillary service for their practice. Um, we want to focus on doctors that deal predominantly in treating patients with back and knee conditions. So that type of discipline that works really well are going to be, say, a one to five man group that just don't have the infrastructure in place to handle all the finessing of the moving parts of a DME program and are looking to have that type of concierge service run it for them. A practice discipline such as pain management, uh, integrated chiropractic, MD, DO, nurse practitioner, orthos, anyone that deals with with patients' conditions that focus on backs and knees. We want that practice to have a 
good flow of new patients every month because once you've braced a patient, it has to be a revolving door. You have to have new patient flow coming in. We want to work with a practice that has a nice payer mix, uh, Medicare, PPO, in and out of network capabilities. It works well with workers' comp and personal injury. The program does not work well with HMOs and Medicaid. So focusing our efforts on low-hanging fruit, focusing our efforts on doctors who are business-minded, focusing our efforts on backs and knees. Is that helpful? Well, in that spirit, Lisa, you're talking, looking for business-minded practitioners. So tell us about the revenue model. What type of revenue can they expect to make? So Unlike a stock and bill in a consignment closet where the doctor might get paid a supply fee or a stipend or might not, this program is designed for them to do pretty much just what they've been doing, sending it out the door. So there's going to be a little bit of paperwork involved, fitting the patient right there in the office, and then we're going to handle billing under their MPI, and again, the money goes direct to them. So a qualified doctor for the program can look to make between $500 and $1,500 pure profit per patient, per doctor. So if we can focus on a doctor that's seeing maybe two to four patients a week, they can generate ten to $15,000 a month in income. And that, again, is per doctor. So to give you a few easy figures, say a back brace that costs 200 a Medicare reimbursement is between 950 and 990 depending on the specific state, right? And on knee braces that cost between 140 to 360, the reimbursement rates on those are coming in between 560 and 860. So there's a large profit to be captured that currently they're probably sending out the door. So we can help them to bring this all back in house. So you've got a doctor, they've signed up, they've been accredited, they've got the DME in their office. What are some of the challenges that you will face um, with practices getting started? Because I know from my experience, it's, you know, it's one thing to get them to sign up for the solution. So how, how easy is it to get it off the ground once they're, once they're signed up? Sure. So what I can say some of the biggest challenges we face are that doctors can't see the forest for the trees. And that's pretty fair to say, right? Their offices are so slamming busy, they don't have time to look up and see something else. This program is going to give them this great opportunity. We want there to be business-minded people. They have to have a mind open like a parachute. They have to agree to change the way that they have been doing business in the past. So we want to pre-qualify them. Are they coachable? Are they teachable? Can we help them to implement this program? And what works well for the consultants in the field is to focus on the street, you know, we like to call them the, the three strategic returns on investments. And one is strategic return on investments. So in that regard, are they, are they able to generate, do they have a patient load that can support a profit center of three to, you know, two to three patients a week or 500 to 1500 per patient in revenue? Do they have something in their practice that they can work with? Are they based on their payer mix, based on their in and out of network capabilities? Is this something that they're of interest in? So if you pose them the question, that if I could show you a program that could bring you an additional five to 15,000 month per profit per month per doctor, are you interested? You want that answer to be yes, right? Because if they're not, if this doesn't make sense for them strategically and financially, then, then you have no program. So on the financial return on investment, we're going to help to generate a financial performa based on that practice. We're going to know how many doctors, what their payer mix is. We're going to be able to provide them to the penny what this program can bring them. And then if that is making sense to them and they want to say move forward, then let's talk about the operational return. And are they willing to change the way they do business? Can we assign a point person or point persons to work with me to run this project? And when that all comes into place, this program is electrified. It 
it just takes off. And one thing that we have implemented is the new concierge uh, fly-in consulting service where I actually go into that office and for two days train the staff work with the doctors, handhold one-on-one to get them off the ground and cash flow positive very, very quickly. So those are some of the ways that we can see the challenges and some of the ways that we can help to divert any pitfalls and get them off the ground fast in revenue. Lisa, for our sales reps out there in the field, what are the key two or three selling points that you would, that you would use if you have 30 seconds or one minute with the doctor? Key selling points that I would use. (laughs) I would say, are they interested in the program that could yield them a great, strong revenue? Do they have a proper payer mix? Have they been sending this out the door? Can we do an evaluation and show you what kind of revenues we can make? And if we could handle all the heavy lifting from legal compliance implementing non-surgical and surgical protocols, office staff training, inventory management. If we can do all of this for you and generate you a strong revenue stream, will you consider partnering with Orthosport DME Advanced and AMS Solutions to bring this program to light? And I think that when the doctors see a financial performer of how much money they've been sending out the door, that is usually the eye opener. And then you focus on this is going to enhance revenue for the practice. It's going to maximize clinical outcomes for your patient's care and convenience with quality products. It's going to lower all overall health care costs and surgical intervention of un, you know, additional medical injuries. And it's going to enhance their patient care experience. Well, I think the best thing a sales rep could do, judging by this phone call alone, is just get Lisa on the phone with your doctor. So however you got to do that, use those selling points to get interest from your physician. But we have a, a lot of support here to help you get these deals closed and get them implemented. And obviously, you can hear Lisa knows this program backwards and forwards, and she's very effective at selling this to physicians. So Lisa, I want to thank you for getting on. This was great info. We'll definitely have you on again. And um, if they want to reach, if you guys want to reach Lisa or ourselves, you can email us at, I'm going to do it this time, Viv. Hold on. <laughs> I, I have it memorized. It only took me 16 episodes. Ancillary, pod, <laughs> ancillary podcast at gmail.com. And also follow us on our LinkedIn group. We will get a discussion going on there. If you have any questions about DME or if you're not selling this now, you want more information, feel free to reach out to us. We'll get you in touch with Lisa. Lisa, thank you again for joining us. It is my pleasure. Thank you for the opportunity. Take care. Thanks, Lisa. And Mike, you're learning every week. (laughs) I'm a little slow, but I'm, I'm getting there. Okay, thanks, everyone. We'll see you on the next episode.